and in today's video, I will be reacting and bringing to the final episode of Hirogato Sky. Pretty here, I don't even want to do this. Like, I, for the last hour or even longer, I have been dreading this. Like, I, I'm happy, but at the same time, of course, I am sad. It, you, we all know this. It ha it, this is, I've been like this since, what, day one, like, with Futariwa, but for most of you, I've been like this ever since Kira Kira, where, of course, we get the attachment, we love the group, we, yeah, like, the group is holy and everything else, and then it's time to move on from the group to go on to the newer group, and, yeah, like, literally two hours ago, uh, or even an hour ago or something, uh, literally Ish came out, and I started crying, and I was just like, oh my god, it's just, it's getting more and more real, and once I watch this, we're done, and until next week, which... Uh, it, it's so, uh, it, it's a lot, but other than that, let's go ahead and get started with the final episode in three, two, one, go. Ernie, uh, something tells me I'm just going to be crying again by the end of this. <laughs> oh. I'm already tearing up. It never seems real until it finally comes out when I can't do this. Oh my god! Oh, god damn it, I can't. I'm not supposed to be crying now until the end of the episode. <sighs> I should have got tissues. <laughs> Ooh, majesty, not the teeth, though. <laughs> not the tooth. <laughs> Just butterfly with the move. Like, uh... <laughs> Okay, you can't, uh, even though I already saw that part on Twitter, still just seeing it, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not, oh god, I can't. Not the fucking sea moon pose, like, oh my god. That's a lie. Because if you really loved her, you wouldn't go down this road. Mm -mm.
that's like the worst time. <laughs> Maybe because you're just tired or you're hungry. Even Sora, the girlfriend, just doing the pose, like giving me my trigger goodness, which I love, but oh my god. I didn't think that was going to happen, but okay. Yeah, it's really over now. <laughs> I'm not going to cry anymore. Nope. No? But you can wait.
I mean, well, where else can they go? That too. Even though we are not done yet, my biggest thing that I want to see is them older. We've, we've gone past that tradition. I would like to see it bring back, brought back. Just this once, I pray. That's all I want. I think now she just has everything all filled out. Oh, my she <laughs> Huh. But, mm -hmm. but.
behind. We gotta go. Literally the next step. I don't know what to say right now. I'm too emotional. This is too much. Not too much. <sighs> we, okay. I'm, I'm gonna wait. I'm wait. I'm gonna wait until it's over. And then we'll talk, cause... Whoa, God!
I'm gonna miss that smile, like, so, so much. <laughs> Bye. Freaking out is <laughs> Jesus Christ, I need, I need a moment, a good behind minute. Okay, so, for the final episode, this was everything I wanted and just more. <laughs> Number one, like, okay, let, let's just go ahead and get the last little bit first. Now, it is a little weird. One, they did not have cure wonderful show up because traditionally that's also when the traditional thing for you know pretty care where like usually the final episode is dealing with like the first half of number one it's the bat the rest of the battle the conclusion of it and then eventually of course the final goodbyes and then of course at least a pop-up of the new character who is going to be taking over aka the baton pass which yes you got the baton pass at the end of the episode but, I mean, you're integrating the character into the episode, not just, oh, we're going to have her show up at the end of the episode um, and just be like that and stuff. So that is a little different where the fact is she wasn't in it, but I get it because of the fact is it's like, oh, hey, this is starting very quickly. Maybe they just decided to do something different this year for the 20th anniversary, but their baton pass is really freaking cute. I mean, I love the fact it, it would have been interesting, but it's okay. It's okay. They already did it with a dog before. So, you know, I get that is the fact is they can't really have her first be a dog and then change into her pretty gear form, but I digress. It's okay. All right. But going into this final episode, the battle was quick. We already know that the, the final episode with the final battle is always the quickest for the first half of the episode and such. I do love the fact of them adding a song. I ha I think for a while we have not really seen that with Pretty Cure in Hot Minutes and such. I think, because it's been a long, a long ass time since I've seen Futali Waz and it makes me want to rewatch that and such, especially to see like if they really did like a one-to-one -one, especially with having a song at the end, the ending credits and stuff because long ass time once again but the emotional impact of course the last couple of moments with this group together saying their final goodbyes like i already knew that was gonna get me i think a lot of us knew it was going to get all of us like whether you're, you're coming into the show from like Futaniwa or any of the other series and when you get into that final episode and being like okay this is the last time we're seeing these characters all together before we move on. Like, yeah, it's an emotional journey and stuff. It's an emotional roller coaster. And I, <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking, like, all right, I'm just going to cry at this. Like, the fact is that I cried at the beginning of the episode. We wasn't even into the episode yet, but I still cried. Like, I wasn't expecting that. And then just hearing Elle just, you know, like, tell Machido to hug her and stuff. And she's saying, I love you broke me and, and i'm just like this is it that we're done like it, it hurts still but it's just like you really want more episodes and more moments with these characters and stuff because it feels like we're 
we're still leaving like or no there's still so much to tell and such and so it kind of really does remind me of how I felt all those years ago when I finished Girl Princess the first time and or even any other pretty fair series in a nutshell when you finish it and you just you know you're happy that you were along the ride and along that journey for a whole year but then the fact is like you're never seeing these characters again until, you know, we get the next All-Star movie. And then we all know the situation in the All-Star movies. We're, we're, we're not going to talk about us. <laughs> we're not going to talk about us. <laughs> you know, that's just, that's another day. I'll say that. Um, but, so, but, the, uh, I cannot speak. Overall, the final episode was good. It was everything that I wanted and more. I love the fact that we had first half of it going into Skyland and then the second half really concluding where, back on Earth, and such, because that is their second home slash, you know, Akaha and Mashiro's first home and such, just as much as Skyland will be their second home for those two and such. Now, alright, let's, of course, go into our five lovely characters. So, instead of me starting, normally I start with our, our first Kira going into our last. We're going to go a little different this time. We're going to go backwards. I think I also did that last year. I don't really remember. So, Let's go ahead and start with Miss Little Eltron, aka Miss Kaguya herself, Miss Komi-san. Um, L L was a delight. Of course, it's a baby character, duh. Like baby characters are always going to be a weakness for me. Um, it's been like that since the beginning for Pretty Cure and stuff. She's already up there with freaking um Hagutan and any other baby character that has been in this series, but I think the one thing that I loved about her more than other babies, especially I can kind of say that for Hagutan is, with Hagutan especially if you have seen um, Haguto and her story and the connection of everything is, we I felt like there was not a, a lot to be told about Hagutan, and I feel like with Elle as a character, as we got to see her grow every single week and learning more about her powers and stuff and the connection of the past and why um, our big bad daughter essentially didn't really hate her but hated the previous princess and stuff. But then also getting to learn about what Elle loved, what she disliked and everything. Just seeing her typically act like a child and a baby was like the cutest thing. Plus the fact is, yes, she's voiced by freaking Kaguya slash Komi slash whatever other character Komi her Seiyu has played, but of course this will probably be the most, like, for everybody who has officially watched this for her and stuff and learning about her Seiyu, this will be her most known role besides both Kaguya-sama and Komi-san and such. You know, we're just hoping that those, those two shows get it. Well, Kaguya has another season. We're just hoping Komi-san gets another season. I'm just saying. But still, so that I can always reference it and stuff. I do love the fact that, you know, with Elle, she got to interact with everyone. There was always a moment where in each and every single episode, whether she was interacting with Tsubasa, Sora, Mashiro, or even Aga, like, it was really cute and impactful and sweet and adorable. And of course, yeah, it makes me want to have kids and I cannot wait to have my own kids. How I even said that with Hagutan because the, I'll say it like this. Just like with Spy Family, this show did the same thing. They did it with also Hagutan Pretty Gear where you have a kid and of course, you know, you're probably a parent or like just a guy or a girl watching this with your boyfriend or your girlfriend and you're like, damn, I kind of want to get married and have kids. So yeah, that population of kids is going up. We all know that. So, I, I mean, because, like, kids are a weakness, and they're just super cute and adorable and such. But she's grown throughout these 50 episodes. She's grown into this most, like, this beautiful woman or a really young lady, and I'm super duper proud of her of what she's done and the things that she had to work through and such. There were there was never really a time or an episode that I disliked for her. I think, honestly, any episode that focused on Elle, even if it was, like, let's say, a Sora episode featured a little bit of, you know, L. It's still good and impactful and stuff. It was like the, any episode focused on any of them were good. But I still enjoyed it regardless. And so I will definitely miss her a lot. I will definitely miss just having her on my screen and just, you know, gushing over her. Because that's my baby. And I, I love her to death. I do wish that I kind of got like a plush or something of her. But because she is such, oh, well, really all five of them are all popular characters and such. And going on Amazon Japan and finding something is uber hard. And the last time that I literally 
went on Amazon Japan to find something that was stuff from Delicious Party and you know how long that took just to get here. Um, so let's now go into, should I talk about my best girl? Screw it. We're going to talk. All right. Let's talk. Let's go ahead and talk about Akira. All right. <laughs> the queen. <laughs> I, I can, she's not a meme queen. Let's say that. Um, of course she's not a Laura. She's not a, um, <laughs> so many other meme queens of pretty gear, but she is, she's. For her first role, and especially having a quote-unquote adult pretty cure into the show, I really think that was, number one, a really good and interesting idea. I do hope that they bring something like that to this series again, because it's like, oh, hey, not only looking at it for kids, but we're also looking at, you know, adult fans who did grow up with this series, who are continuously watching this series, that we can have a character that we can relate to, because, of course, she's dealing with, like, not only going to school, which, number one, I will say, I do wish we kind of got to see more of that and such. I, I still, you know, loved overall of seeing her hanging out with, you know, the group and everything. But I also kind of wish that we got to see her at college or, you know, the four of them going to visit Agha at school and stuff. Instead of it always being, like, at her job and where she works and stuff. Um, but I get it because of the fact that she's not the main character and such but any of the episodes that were impactful especially the one where the little boy had to move and she did the like the sweetest goodbye to him I think that was really her best episode not only that one the one about with her sisters and where she was doing the modeling thing and such and we got to find out that yes she's related to them or just like her opening episode really just with her coming in and wanting to protect the kids and such like those are really impactful to her and such and yeah her her relationship with Tsubasa like I oh, like mm, and I didn't even list that one <laughs> the first time those two had to team up together that I think that is probably the number one best episode for her besides her her introduction that is literally her best because yes they are both opposites opposites do attract and such but at the same time you know it took a moment and it's very similar to um freaking Solel and Solene from uh, freaking Star Twinkle and how their relationship was because yeah there were times where they didn't see eye to eye and you could definitely see that in episodes but when it came to the moment where we had to stop bickering and we had to get ish done they were able to put their differences aside and to move on as a duo and such and seeing them like as much as I love me my my girlfriends my, my girlfriends the wives the lesbians Amashio and Sora Subasa and Agha will always be my number one. Like that duo, I, I love that dynamic and I hope to pray and I pray to God that going into Wonderful, we do get to see something like that again. I think the male and female teamwork of a duo is very interesting. Yes, I love like my my girl duos. My girl duos are just mwah, chef's kiss 10 out of 10, but something about having these two together and taking that as like, oh, hey, let's sneak that in. I wonder how this is going to work. Because I think a lot of us were really pretty much like, how is this going to work with these two and such? But in the end, it was good, especially going into last week's episode. Shoot, I just dropped my chapstick. Um, and how, like, Agaha was like, I'm going to do this. And he stayed with her. I, I thought that was really sweet because that just, like, once again brings their relationship full circle and of course like seeing them both say goodbye to each other like ah, <laughs> it hurt it hurt a lot and just because oh, that's my babies and I, I miss them Subasa, aka my my precious baby boy my little birdie <laughs> my my baby from Haikyuu who like for him his Seiyu I, I have got to say like this year like overall from 23 to 24 was his year especially for a lot of things that he was in and the fact that he's you know our first boy I mean yeah look at the other ones that we've gotten you know but those three boys paved the way for him and so I am hoping once again we continue that tradition with the boy that is going to be in Wonderful and his bunny and such. But 
with Subasa. Subasa was someone at first, like, I was very skeptical because, and a little worried because of the fact is, first boy. And there's a lot of pressures on being the first boy and such. But I really do think he did a really good job on it. Especially, I love the fact that we got to learn that he loved, he wanted to fly. And I was expecting him, you know, almost every single episode to do something with flying. Whether it was airplanes, rockets, something and such i would have loved to seen him you know as a birdie once again even though we got to see a little snippet of him flying but like getting more into details than that i love the fact that you know when he um eventually went home we got to see his family that tears <laughs> lots and lots of tears um but the biggest thing is i love the emotional like impact between him and l especially seeing their dynamics and seeing them together and just any little moment that those two had because you know he is her knight he will always be there for her you know until the end of days and such and so it does make me wonder especially if we potentially in the future who knows how long that's gonna be um get an adult version of this where it's going what it's going to look like and how everything is going to go so i give it like 20 years from now um you never really know <laughs> so i might be like i'll be 50 and, and that's a weird thing to say for me being 50 even though i'm only 30 um but not only like i said with l also with his relationship with agaha him and her and their team weight team hmm team dynamic teamwork ish like that how the funniest moment from them which is like it's it's up there with freaking Hagato not Hagato um yeah 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 Hagato um Emiru and Lulu's episode that I love to death so much and they did the freaking like parody and having the the freaking opening song in the episode like out of nowhere just it's the episode of where they tried to do the same thing of sky and, and prism and using their power thing like oh it's gonna be this and then you know it was like uh uh like a big lol laugh out moment and stuff i think that was the best freaking episode for them and them coming into their own powers and such and their dynamic as a couple or really just as a teammates and such i mean partners um but once again also them leaving each other that freaking hurt too because like i'm just saying like they've seeing the five of them together like hurts and then seeing them as a duo or one duo one trio and such still hurts and stuff and then you know when it's just that fight of the body and you're just like and, but just when he said like his dream was to be a cool adult like her like that also broke me it just it is too much <laughs> too freaking much like uh, da, 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 i cannot all right Next up, Mashino. My Ravening. Never would have thought in our wildest dreams that our little freaking mascot from freaking Healing Good Pretty Cure would also become a Pretty Cure like two years later or three years later. Which, you know, once again, you, you never know with Pretty Cure and such. Is it the same thing with another with a certain little movie that came out a couple of days ago and stars a character who played, or well, a say you who played a mascot in that movie for the Magical Girl series. And now look at her. She's also a Pretty Cure. Puka. <laughs> um, it just tells you, like, number one, casting. You just never know what could be in store for people but for machido and seeing her as like instead of being you know thinking about it remember because if sora was not our main person it probably would have been machido learning about everything i do love the fact is like especially between episodes one and two number one really focused on sora of course we'll continue that when we get to sora and talking about her but going into episode two and how episode two really focused on machido and that typical of Oh hey, like this is the pink the pink cure of the show. This is hers, da 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 da. Which you think that's gonna happen, but because we've already gotten that introduction to Sora, you get another really interesting introduction. Now, to have those two as a duo and bringing back, and I hope that, you know, Wonderful also does this as well, is the duos and then slowly but surely missing mixing it into a trio and then so on and so forth and stuff. 
Going into that, that was interesting. I love the fact that, you know, Machido wanted to be a storybook writer or just an Arthur in, ge in general. It does give feels to um, the one girl from Go Princess. This is the second time, you know, I've talked about this with someone about that. Um, so, once again, like, I, that was, like, something I, I kept saying was I secretly wished that Go Princess had had a connection or something or just anything where she could have relied on. Or it would have been nice for, like, Komachi or anyone who's done really something with, like, writing and something to interact with Machido and be like, okay, do this and don't do that and such. But I do love the fact is that, you know, her drawings and everything else and her getting, like, so many, like, opinions and, and her dreams and wanting to do stuff that, regardless, before, she talked to everyone, but really, it was always, of course, her wife. She always listened to her wife at the end of the day because who else was she going to listen to regardless of getting her, like, full opinion, which is Sora and such. But there were times where mm, she came into her own as a character. I think she is a good second leader in command because if there were times, which there were, um, when Sora was down, Mashido did lead. It's very similar to how a lot of us wanted... Um, What's her face from feeling good to get that one leadership episode, but because of the situation of COVID, those episodes were gone, and of course, those will never see light like today for the rest of the years of our time. Those are in like a vault, and I don't think anybody except you know the seiyus and the casting directors and everybody else will be able to see those episodes. I wish we could, but I think they also put those episodes on those the Blu-ray. I can't speak the Blu-rays. I don't know, but, you know, I don't think those episodes will ever see the light of day. Um, but I, I love the fact is, with her final goodbye, like, of course, she is begging and, you know, wa wanting to be a little selfish and just asking Sora, like, can you stay another day? Because, of course, like, you know, when you have a friend or, in her case, girlfriend, because it's a girlfriend, they les they in love, mm-hmm. They married. They've been married since episode freaking one. Duh. Um, because she loves her so freaking much. And you can't deny that they don't. Like, psh, episode, was it episode two or three? And how she was like, oh, hey, be careful. And, and Sora just, like, lights up. Married. Tell me less. This is a GL. We all know it is. Um, she wanted to be selfish in that moment and just to have her there. But you know that eventually, like, She's got to go. And as she kept saying, like, it's not forever. Like, you'll always be able to see me and such. And so seeing her break down, like, yeah, that hurts and stuff. Because, of course, you just want that person who's super duper important to you. Who will, like, always be by your side. And, you know, at that time we were thinking, oh, we're going to be gone and we're not going to see them for a week. And then come back the next day. The next day. And it's like all the tears that we just had a couple minutes ago, take them tears back. Give my tears back and such. And so seeing that cute little reunion with the five of them was just like super duper sweet and such. But seriously, Mashido was just a very interesting character herself. Once again, congratulations to her Seiyu from going to a mascot to a pretty cure in a interesting time. I, I you know, you just never know what the hell is going to happen and such. Um... And now, finally, <laughs> to round it off, because we're at the 47-minute mark, and we're almost at 50, because you already know this is going to be a 50-minute video. Miss Sora, a.k.a. our Cure Sky herself. Okay, so, of course, going into this season, there was a lot of potential and a lot of skeptical worries and issues and everything, because she, of course, is our first blue cure. So there was a lot of pressure on her, um to lead just as much as the pink cures have done for over 20 something years. And I, I remember seeing on Twitter last year around this time, um, some people were sort of like, you either were supportive or you were not supportive or you were in the middle, you were undecisive and <clears throat> You're, you were very unsure about this. Like, of course, it's something new. And, of course, just as much as anyone else, we're not, like, people aren't the greatest to change. 
and such. And so my biggest thing was, yeah, I was a little skeptical at first. I was like, how are we going to do this? How is this going to go and such? It's always been pink and now we're going into blue. This is weird. But I still think, you know, the director and everyone else who was on this season for this and produced it and everything, um, they did a damn good job. Her say you really proved, like, everything that she could literally handle the pressures of being that that number one and I think she did a damn good job even Sora there were some moments especially for Sora where it's very she's very impactful and such I I think just her relationship with Captain Shalala and the the saying of never fall to a hero girl which I think a lot of people resonated with that a lot um Everybody loved that. I love that. If I could, if I could get a tattoo tomorrow, I would literally put that in cursive on my hands, and that would be something on my wrist or on my arm or somewhere, and just something that I could always look at to remember it and stuff. Because that is a really interesting quote that you know Captain Jella gave her and such. I do also love the fact is like at first because. I remember going in episode one and how I was like, oh my God, she's such a Deku and stuff. And literally, yeah, she's still kind of like that, but she's really, you know, evolved more and such. And so now she's be, she's gone from a Deku to freaking all my delight. Um, and I'm really proud of everything. Even like, let's go back to last week, this girl getting a dark moment and becoming semi evil for like a sec until her girlfriend was like, hey, yo, like, wake the F up, like, <laughs> you're not gonna hurt me, but still seeing her in that dark moment and giving, like, kind of, like, mm, kind of an Easter egg to, like, any other Magical Girl series that has done that, so I, the only one that I can really think of, once again, is Wings Club, um, yeah, 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 because, I mean, yeah, we can say all the other Pretty Cure series, but really, it's just, Winx Club is the number one that I can immediately think of on that. Um, let's see. So, what else can I say? I, I love the fact is with her and the situation of her journal. Like, that was the cutest thing. I, hell, you know, as a funny thing is, like, freaking Apple just, like, announced, don't do that phone, um, a journal thing. And I thought that was the cutest thing ever. And I was just like, oh, <laughs> we do in Hero Got a Sky Pretty Care. But... I, I even love how almost not every episode, but at least majority of the episodes, we got to see something in it. Of course, my favorite one was the Futaniwa Pretty Cure ending portion for it and having them both together because it's just like, oh, like, because, yeah, we're celebrating the whole thing of that um, and such. And so Sora as a character was just really impactful. I think a lot of people, whether you got into Pretty Cure because of her or you've been there from the beginning or with anything else. She has proved that she is a good leader, that she was able to do what she needed to do. Um, any of her episodes were pretty much like the most impactful, very emotional and such. Give me a second. Yes. Oh, did you have to pause? I, I'm at 52 minutes. And, and talking. Okay. All right. Uh, bye. All right. Bye. <laughs> um. So of course, it it's a lot to deal with, but I think she did a damn good job and such and so and now it just makes you wonder how wonderful is going to do and such when she comes in next week. Um. Overall, this was a damn good series. These characters mean a lot to me. Uh, it, it's still even funny where it's like how, remember how when I thought Captain Shella was going to be the bad villain, <laughs> the main villain of this, because I was like, yeah, I'm very skeptical and such, especially with um, going at the end of the delicious party and thinking that it was going to be similar to this. But I do love the fact of what this story was or what this series was as a story, what the cat really what the storyboards and everyone the writers and everyone did for this because it is still good yes there were some things i didn't like about it there were some things i loved about it and some things where i was iffy on but i still loved it overall i still think the ideas that they had are really good once again we just hope 
that going into wonderful and anything after wonderful going into the 25th anniversary the 30th anniversary the 45th the 40th the 50th or whatever however long prettier is going to be here is that we continue those ideas and such as we also talked about yes i mean it is skeptical i know a lot of people were like oh wing was good but i'm ready to go back to just an all-girl team me now after having wing i kind of really don't want to go back to an all-girl team i want to go kind of co-ed and it's i really like the fact that we had a guy on here it made it different and such i think it would be very um not only good for sales and everything because yeah it also it just tells you that once again like looking at freaking healing good i mean hug a toe you can be anything anyone can do anything that's the same thing with sweets and their opening saying, you know, guys, and girls, and just like that, that anyone can be a pretty girl or a magical girl in a nutshell. And would I rewatch this? And, and Harpy, yeah, because it was pretty here and such. I haven't rewatched any of the other ones in like a a hot behind minute except Mahotsky and freaking Yes Go Go. But definitely, like, I, I would. I, would, I, would I show it to my mom? I don't know. That's the thing, because my mom only likes to watch shows. Well, the longest series she's watched is both Death Note and Dorara, but I don't know about this. That would be a potential maybe, but I really enjoyed this show a lot. And of course, with Pretty Cure being so close and dear to my heart, of course, I love every season and such, but I don't know. Something about this one was just different and impactful, and the words that every single one of these characters, you know, said every single week, the inspiration, the quotes and everything will definitely stay with me even in the next couple of weeks and going into Wonderful and stuff where, of course, <laughs> something's going to tell me because I've done it before where, you know, I instantly will forget everybody's name and moving on to the next one or I'll remember like a moment or something, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I definitely will miss this a lot and just, yeah, yeah. But I will say this. So you see, it is, it's almost 10 o'clock. Um, so, of course, by the time this comes out, officially let's go in tomorrow, um, I will just say this is not the last video. We are not ending this with 50 videos. You are actually ending this with 51 videos. You are getting something tomorrow. So even though this is the official final goodbye, you get one more thing tomorrow, of course. It's very obvious of what it is. Um, I will tell you, I did not cry at it. I really did enjoy it a lot. We'll, of course, talk a little more about that tomorrow when it comes out while I'm at work. I do hope you guys enjoyed it a lot. It was a really interesting experience for an hour and 20-something minute video to see and do. And I think for, once again, a 20th anniversary video or a 20th anniversary celebrating this series and such. This was really impactful and such. And so I I, I want to say, like, I'm really proud of this series and what it has done in the 20th year. 20 years it's done. I have to hurry up and wrap this up. But I honestly cannot wait to see what else is in store with the remainder of this and how long we can continue this. I hope, you know, by the time I'm 40 or 50, you know, I'm still watching Pretty Cure and stuff because, of course, this show means so much to me. But other than that, guys, that is my reaction view towards the entirety of Hirogato Sky Pretty Cure. If you guys enjoy it, enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the Magical Squad. And, of course, I will see you guys officially all next Saturday for the start of a wonderful pretty care and of course sometime tomorrow i'm guessing around like eight or nine o'clock in the morning i'm not really sure yet because i don't think i have um scheduled it for the one little surprise that i have left for this series but until then i will see you guys all next time bye